This is the Snapmaker U1. It's already an impressive 3D printer right out of the box, but with a few modifications, we can make this even better. I've tested out over 10 different upgrades for your U1, and today I'll be showing you some of the best. Some are awesome, some are completely unnecessary, and one of these mods costs under $20 to make and will end up saving you around $150. Yeah, I'm talking about making your own top enclosure. This thing is awesome. And in true fashion, while making a video about improving Proving my Snapmaker U1, I ended up completely destroying it. So let's take a look at what's worth modding on your Snapmaker U1. And speaking of mods, here's a word from today's video sponsor, which is Fantic, where I've been putting their tools to the test over the past few months of use. First up is the Fantic F2 Master Cordless Rotary Tool. I've been using this nonstop to clean up both my FDM and resin 3D prints, and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite tools. It's super lightweight, really comfortable to use for long sessions, and it comes with a whole stash of extra attachments tucked inside its case, keeping all the bits right where I need them, which is perfect for me because I seriously lose everything. And then there's the Fantic S1 Pro electric screwdriver. I use this continuously on my huge 3D printed Nerf blaster build, installing what felt like 200 plus bolts and screws in a single charge across multiple days of use. It not only saved me a ton of time, but it kept me from over tightening anything thanks to the adjustable speed settings. Plus, both tools have built in lights and easily charge over USB-C. Make sure to check out the links in the description down below where you can save 45% off the Fantic F2 Master Cordless Rotary Tool with code JESSEF2M and 44% off the Fantic S1 Pro Electric Screwdriver with the code JESSEF1P. And a big thank you again to Fantic for sponsoring today's video. And before we take a look at the mods, here's how I ended up breaking my U1 printing one of these mods. It all came down to just a fluke of a blob, a print blob, where the print must have lifted off the bed and the printer AI didn't catch it in time, but eventually caught it and it was unfortunately too late. It was fully engulfed. The whole entire extruder, the hot end was just completely encoded with this filament. I tried heating it up and removing the filament and when I did that, I ended up ripping the thermistor. And the printer does come with some tools and spare parts, which will lead us into our first mod in a second. Uh, but the hot end does not have the extra wiring that you're gonna need. And unfortunately, the thermistor that the U1 uses is like a extra long variation of this in order to meet the actual plug at the very top of the extruder. So I wasn't able to swap that out with any other thermistors that I have on hand. So I've reached out to Snapmaker. They are gonna send me a replacement thermistor. In the meantime, I have gone on their website and bought some. I pre-ordered those as well as the extra hot ends. That's one thing I would highly recommend, regardless of what 3D printer you're working with, order spare parts like those thermistors and extra hot ends so that if you ever have an issue like this, you can easily swap that out. And unfortunately, until I get that hot end swapped out, I am not able to print with any of the other three hot ends. I have heard that Snapmaker is working on some kind of an update that will allow you to disable one hot end and continue to work with the others if you ever run into an issue like this. So unfortunately for me, until I get that replacement part or that it update the firmware with that new feature, I'm not gonna be able to use my U1, but I still have some great mods to show you. And the first one has to do with all those tools and accessories that they give you. This is a holder for all those that sits in the very bottom front of the printer. This is a really simple print that allows you to store the two Allen keys, your scraper, as well as your flush cutters and the wire brush. And you can either leave it just sitting in the bottom front or there's actually holes that correspond with the hole placement in the bottom of the printer where I just used a M36 screw to screw those down. And some of you creative folks out there, I would love to see a way for you to be able to mount the tools on the side of the machine. I haven't quite figured out how you can do that with the placement because there's no individual mounting holes on the side and it has a plastic shell. So it's not like you can magnetically attach them. And continuing with the inside of the printer, this is a tool that you can print for anybody that's had issues with their bed leveling that needs to adjust those little knobs on the underside of the bed. Perfectly allows you to get in there and make those adjustments. Now this next one is a quick 10 minute print and it's gonna help keep the PTFE tubes secured in place. Now they're already latched in there with the holders provided by Snapmaker, but this easily slides over to make sure that they're never gonna pop out. One additional mod on top of this mod that I might try adding myself is adding a small 
loop to this clip that will help keep the cable secured in place. And the U1 works great with printing TPU, specifically 95 ATPU. However, if you wanna work with like 85 or 90 ATPU, you're gonna want to remove the PTFE tube. And this is a printable holder that's gonna allow you to hold that in place so that you can install a smaller PTFE tube from the top so that you can feed in your 85 or 90 A TPU. And that's because if you try to load 85 or 90 A TPU through the feeder, it'll just gunk up in the gears there. And since the Snapmaker U1 has side mounted spool holders and then the insert motors on the sides of the machines, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult to print with something like a filament dryer. Well, this mod allows you to easily clip on a PTFE guided insert for specifically printing with your filament dryers. And I love that it just slides and locks into place. And depending on where your filament dryer is located, you might need this next mod, which is a print that allows your PTFE tubes to more easily curve to feed behind the printer, helping prevent any kind of sharp angles when feeding into the printer or out of your filament dryer. And unfortunately, because the U1 loads filament on both sides of the printer, I really haven't found a convenient way to use a four filament dryer like the Sunlu S4 here, unless maybe if you're loading it above or below the printer on another rack. And here's what I love about the 3D printing slash modding community. There's no one size fits all. So there's actually another even easier PTFE mod for the inserts here on the sides of the printer that are just two small little discs. You're basically gonna unmount the feeder off the side of the machine, remove the two bolts, and then there's just a metal insert that easily pops out, and then you can replace it with these printed inserts. Just make sure you don't lose those metal inserts if you ever want to reverse this back. Now, one issue that I ran into while trying to print some of these mods is certain rolls of filament have too wide of a diameter here and will not go on to the spool holders, which can be a challenge. But thankfully, someone's already created a printable mod for this. You basically take the two inserts, place it inside of your spool that's oversized, screw them together. There's a lot of threads here to screw. And then you can mount it on the printer properly. Again, this is really simple and effective way to handle some of these oversized spools that might just not fit properly. Now this next mod, I wouldn't necessarily recommend unless you really don't like the spool holders that are included on the U1. This is a really well thought out design where you can basically snap two of the parts together, then use a screw to screw in the mounting bracket. And then to install it comes the scariest part where you have to grip the existing holder that you have installed and pull that forward. And it should, with a little bit of pressure, pop right out. You can then take your printed spool adapter and pop that right into place. Then you can put your spool on and lock it in place. Now, what I really like about this design is that they provided two different variations of the clip that goes inside of it. One that's a lot more flexible than the other. I'm using the super flexible one so that I can easily take this on and off. And the U1 comes with a built-in camera for remotely monitoring your prints and creating time lapses and all that good stuff. However, people still want to use their own cameras with this machine. So someone has already made a wise camera adapter that uses the little circular inserts on the top of the machine. And you can just plug this directly in place. Now, another camera mod allows you to take the same Wise V3 camera and directly mount it to the door. Realistically, I probably won't be using these mods because of the built-in camera functionality, but it's really cool that it's available if you wanna use them. Now, this last mod is easily the best one of the bunch and it was what led me down this rabbit hole of looking into what mods are available for the U1. And it's none other than the modification that allows you to print your own top cover. Now, this set of files does require that you use the IKEA Samala bins so I jumped in my car and drove to the closest Ikea and picked up some of these bins for myself. This all prints in multiple parts and what's really cool about it is that there's no screws needed. Everything snaps together and then is bolted in place with these 3D printed bolts. And if you decide to make this for yourself, pay attention to the bolts because some of them have thinner heads than the others. There's also a mod of this mod that if you print this back plated version here, it won't require you to disconnect all the cabling and reconnect that. It makes it a lot easier to install. It's then just a matter of sliding this over the printer, making sure to be mindful of the wires and cabling, and then slotting it all into place. Your plastic bin then fits perfectly on top. 
And now since it's fully enclosed, you should be able to print with some more advanced materials. Just keep in mind of what type of hot end that you're working with. In theory, this should also help dampen some of the sound that comes from the printer. I unfortunately have not been able to test this out because of my broken hot end. And if you're not a fan of the plastic bin look, there are mod files available that utilize acrylic panels that look much more in line with the official version that you can order from Snapmaker for a whopping $150. There's also another user that has created their own variation of this that uses even less filament and really simply snaps onto the top and then uses these clips to hold the bin in place. So I can already anticipate the comments. I don't have an Ikea near me, what do I do? Well, you can either order these bins online from Ikea and have them shipped to you, or potentially what you can do is I haven't modded the files yet, but these files look like they could be tweaked ever so slightly to fit a bin from Walmart. These are the Sterilite bins. Unfortunately, this one here that I have is super warped. So if you decide to pick up one of these, just be mindful of the bin that you're picking up, that it doesn't look too warped in areas because in theory, it could potentially fit with just some slight modifications to these print files. Now, another mod slash accessory that I've used a lot on a bunch of my other 3D printers are those cement pavers or the rubber pavers are a combination of both. Unfortunately, the U1 is ever so slightly large where you can technically fit it on one of those, what is it, 16 by 16 pavers, but it's just ever so slightly too large. And I did find a 24 by 16 paver online that I'm tempted to order for this machine. One other mod that I would love to see added to the U1, but I have no idea how it would actually work or get added to it, is a way to modify the door so that it opens wider than where it currently is. That's one of my few gripes of the machine is just how limiting the door is. I want to be able to open this a lot wider than it currently is. And the one accessory that I'm eagerly waiting on that I've also pre-ordered already is the BQ cryo plates. I absolutely love using these on every 3D printer. This is my go-to build plate option for basically every machine. So I can't wait to add these to my U1. And I'm really excited to see that a bunch of people that have backed this over on Kickstarter have already started to receive their machines and are actively creating mods for this printer. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of mods you have in mind for the Snapmaker U1 that you'd like to see. I also want to say a big thank you to Fantix for sponsoring today's video and make sure to use the links down below to get some of these tools. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support me making dang near goofy videos like this one and watching me break my 3d printers i'll also keep you all posted once i have this back up and running i just want to say thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time